Okay, so if you've ever set up a Windows virtual machine in Proxmox, you've probably had that heart-stopping moment looking at your RAM usage. I know I have. Today, we're going to get to the bottom of that crazy mismatch between what Proxmox is telling you and what Windows is showing you. And trust me, it's not nearly as bad as it looks. Right, this is it. This is the moment of panic. You look at your Proxmox dashboard, it's glowing red, screaming that 90% of your RAM is completely maxed out. It feels like the whole system is about to fall over. But then... You pop open the Windows VM, and Task Manager is just chilling, you know, reporting maybe 20% usage. It's totally calm. So, what gives? And that's the first question that pops into your head, right? Is my server about to crash? You see that 90% and you start thinking, oh man, memory leak, some rogue process, what did I do wrong? Is a total system failure just moments away? Well, the short answer is, probably not. And we're going to find out exactly why. So how can both of these screens be telling the truth? Well, the whole heart of the issue is that Proxmox and Windows are telling two completely different stories. They aren't even looking at the same thing. Think of it like this. One is talking about a loan you took out, and the other is talking about how much of that loan you've actually spent. This right here is the fundamental misunderstanding. See, Proxmox reports on allocated RAM. If you tell it, hey, give this VM 24 gigs, Proxmox marks that entire 24 gigs as used. It's been loaned out. It's off the books. But Windows? It's only reporting on active RAM, the memory that applications like Chrome or a game are using right this second. It conveniently leaves out all the memory it's using for cache, which we'll get to. This is the perfect analogy for it. Proxmox is the bank. It loaned out 24 gigs of RAM. And as far as the bank is concerned, that cache is out of the vault. It's gone. But you, the VM, you've only actually spent a little bit of it. The rest is just sitting there, ready to be used. Both of you are correct. You're just looking at the transaction from different points of view. Now, on top of that, there's another major player in this mystery. Modern operating systems, and Windows is a prime example, are basically memory hoarders. And they do it for a good reason. Their philosophy is simple. Any memory that's not being used is wasted memory. So Windows will grab any free RAM it can find and fill it with cached files and data to make everything feel faster. Proxmox sees all that cache and says, yep, that's used. But Windows knows it can drop that cache in a millisecond if an application actually needs a space. So we've got allocation versus active use. And we've got aggressive caching. But there is one absolutely critical component that really explains why Proxmox seems like it's flying blind. And it all comes down to a tiny but super important piece of software that, a lot of the time, is just not there. And that missing piece is what allows for something called memory ballooning. It sounds a little weird, but think of it as a direct communication line. It's a special driver that lives inside your Windows VM. It can inflate a balloon to grab a hold of memory that's not being used, and, this is the important part, it can deflate that balloon to give the memory back to Proxmox. It's the negotiator between the two. A really great way to picture this is like an air pump. Without that driver installed, the hose is just disconnected from the tire. The VM literally has no way to tell Proxmox, hey, you know those 10 gigs you gave me? I'm not using them right now, you can have them back. So from Proxmox's point of view, once it gives that RAM away, it's gone for good. So what happens when this guest agent and its balloon driver are missing? Well, the whole system of communication just breaks down. Proxmox has zero visibility into what's really going on inside the VM. Memory ballooning is completely off the table. That means unused RAM is never returned to the host, even if it's just sitting there as cache. The VM just ends up hoarding memory it doesn't even need. Okay, okay, enough about the problem, right? You're here because you want to fix it. And the good news is, solving this communication breakdown and getting your dashboards to actually make sense is surprisingly straightforward. Let's just walk through exactly what you need to do. Here we go, your five-step fix. Step one, and listen, this is the big one, install the QEMU guest agent on your Windows VM. This is what connects the air pump. Step two, set a minimum and a maximum memory value for the VM. This just gives the balloon driver some rules to follow. Step three is more of a mindset change. Just accept that OS caching is normal and it's actually helping your system run faster. Step four, if you want the real story, use a tool like HTOP on the Proxmox host itself to see what the VM process is consuming. And finally, step five, just a bit of good practice, never give a VM all of your host's RAM. Always leave a little buffer for Proxmox itself. So as we start to wrap this up, it's really important to reframe the whole situation. Proxmox isn't lying to you. Windows isn't lying to you either. That terrifying red bar on your dashboard isn't actually a sign that everything's about to explode. 
And that's really the bottom line here. This whole thing, it's not a bug, it's not a flaw in the software, it's just what happens when two different systems are talking about two different things without a translator in the middle to clear things up. So let's put this whole mystery to bed once and for all. Proxmox reports the total memory it has loaned out. Windows reports only the memory it's actively using right now. That huge gap between them, that's mostly Windows being smart and using cache. And the magic key, the secret decoder ring that lets them talk to each other is the QMU guest agent and that balloon driver. It's the translator that was missing all along. And that kind of leaves us with a really interesting question, doesn't it? Now that you see the full picture here, that this isn't a bug, it's just a matter of perspective, what other system alarms or scary looking charts in your home lab might just be telling a different and perfectly normal side of the story?